We're going to talk about fluid sampling and there's two methods, two recommended methods of fluid sampling, that is the vacuum pump and the oil valve probe. Okay? The, the vacuum pump is used on non-pressurized systems and the oil valve probe is used on pressurized systems. So we're going to demonstrate on this 320 excavator uh, doing a sample of the, the final drive. Prior to taking our fluid sample from the final drive on our 320 excavator, we need to mix the oil up in the compartment. So when we take our sample, we get a good representation of the oil that's in this compartment. To do that, you need to drive the machine in order to rotate the final drive. And once you have mixed the oil up, then you need to park the machine so the level line is parallel with the ground with your drain plug located at the bottom of the compartment. Once in that position, we can remove the fill plug and take our fluid sample. What a lot of technicians will do when they take their sample is they'll remove this drain plug here and as the fluid is draining out of the final drive, they'll take their sampling bottle and they'll put it underneath the, the drain stream and they'll take their sample that way. And if you do that, you get a very poor representation of the fluid that's in that compartment. That method should never be used. The only two approved methods for taking a sample are the vacuum pump and the oil valve probe. So, don't try to cut corners and save time. If you do that, you might as well not even take the sample because the data is not going to be helpful. So, so before taking our sample with the vacuum pump, we're going to need to assemble the vacuum pump so we can take the sample. And the tooling required is the, the, the tubing. We have the vacuum pump, and if you notice this pump, I have written oil on it. If you were taking a coolant sample, you should use a separate pump in order to take the coolant sample. And we also have a bottle, our kit that comes with the two caps, the probe, and we have our tube cutter. Okay. So to assemble the vacuum pump, we want to cut a length of tubing off that's long enough to enable us to reach halfway into the compartment that we are sampling. And if you notice the tube cutter, most technicians use a side cutters or they'll use a knife in order to cut the tubing. And when you use those, you run the risk of cutting yourself and also crushing the tubing, which makes it difficult to install into the vacuum pump. So I recommend that we use the tube cutter. So we can determine how much we need and we just simply with one hand we can cut that tubing off very easily and make a nice clean cut. So now we're going to assemble our hose into the vacuum pump and again we're going to we're going to insert it about 25 millimeters into the vacuum pump. And then we're going to tighten this aluminum ring down until it's snug. Don't over tighten it or you will damage the vacuum pump. Now in our kit, the only thing we're going to use out of this kit is the bottle and the solid cap. Now we want to make sure we don't contaminate our cap, so leave that in the bag until after you've taken your sample. So we're going to take our new bottle and we're going to install it on the vacuum pump. And you want to make sure that that's nice and snug because you don't want it to leak uh, because you have to be able to pull a vacuum using the pump and if this is not sealed well then your vacuum pump won't work. Okay, So now we're assembled and ready to take our sample. Now sometimes when you're taking a, a sample from 
say an engine where you have to go through the dipstick tube or the swing drive on an excavator where you have to go through the dipstick dipstick tube you need to uh, you want to make sure that you don't take the sample off the bottom of the compartment or off the top of the car compartment so you can use the dipstick as a measuring device in order to determine how far you need to, to insert the tubing so if you take the tubing and extend it just a little bit past the end of the dipstick and mark where the top of the dipstick is then you can take your marker and put a line on this tubing and also put an arrow that says this side goes into the to, to the dipstick okay. because if you don't do the, don't put that arrow on there when you cut your tubing off, you can sometimes forget which end goes into the, the dipstick tube. So it's a good idea to put that arrow on there. So now you would insert this hose through the dipstick tube until this line comes flush with the top of the dipstick tube. And now you know that you're in the center of the compartment and not on the bottom or at the top of the compartment. I'm going to demonstrate how to take an oil sample using the vacuum pump on a non-pressurized system such as this final drive on the 320 excavator. The first thing you want to do before you take your sample is clean around your fill plug so that when you take the plug out you don't contaminate your system. And once that's cleaned we're going to break that plug loose. Now when taking this plug out, you want to take it out very slowly and you want to kind of wiggle the plug as you're taking it out because you remember we warm the machine up and we mix the oil. There could be pressure inside this compartment and if you take this plug out too fast, then you're going to get sprayed with oil. So as you're taking the plug out, you want to kind of jiggle it and you can hear the, the pressure release and so if you slowly take it out we now have our system open and when you're taking a sample you should always check the fluid level in the compartment that you're sampling because on final drives that fluid level should be even with the bottom of the threads in the plug if that compartment is low on oil, then it's a good chance that there could be a leak in that final drive because that oil level shouldn't change as you operate the machine. So, so if you find that oil level down here, then there could, there's an indication that there may be a leak in this system. Okay? So, so it looks, this one here looks good. We got oil just trickling out. So it's, it's at the proper level. So now we're going to take our vacuum pump that we assembled earlier and we're going to insert this tubing so it goes about halfway into the compartment. We don't want to take our sample off the bottom and we don't want to take it right here at the top. We want to take it somewhere in the middle. So we're going to kind of see about how much tube we need to put in and we're going to stick this tubing like that about halfway and now we're going to now you notice that once we pull the vacuum that it it keeps filling up so as that gets up to our fill line we're going we're gonna to loosen this bottle to break the vacuum so oil doesn't keep coming into the bottle. So you see how it's still filling up? So now we're almost to our line. And once we get to our line, then we're going to loosen this bottle so we break the vacuum and now oil doesn't come out anymore. And we're going to tighten this. Now we've got our bottle to the correct line and if you notice I have kept my pump vertical position and horizontally so oil has not touched my pump yet so I haven't contaminated my pump. 
So now I'm going to cut this off with my tube cutter. And we're going to remove this hose here from the final drive. Then we're going to put our plug in. So we don't get any dirt in our compartment. Okay. Now we're going to remove the bottle from our pump. Okay. And we're going to put our solid cap on our bottle. And now I'm going to remove this hose from our vacuum pump. Now the mistake that many technicians make is they loosen this ring and they pull this hose out from the top. And what happens is this oil that's dripping from this hose goes inside your pump and you've contaminated your pump. So rather than pull it out this direction, since we've cut it off up here and there is no oil up in here, we can take that hose, loosen the ring, and we can shove the hose out the bottom and take it out that way. And now there is absolutely no oil that got into my pump. So now we're going to take our bottle here and we're going to write on it final drive oil. And we also need to say, is it the right final drive or the left final drive? Now the way you determine that, on excavators, the final drives are always positioned to the rear of the machine, and your right and left side are determined from the operator's position. So in this case, we have the final drive at the rear, and it would be on the right side. Now it's critical that you determine the correct final drive because if there's a bad sample and they need to do some more investigating on the final drive, you want them to make sure that they're looking at the correct final drive. After you've taken your sample, you want to inspect the O-ring on your fill plug to make sure it is not damaged and replace if necessary, and then reinstall the plug. And you want to tighten the plug according to the manufacturer's specs using the proper torque wrench.